Morning all. Sorry, that was a little Julian Iletism. Uh, I don't know if you follow this chap, Julian Ilet. He's great. Uh, he's a real electronics geek and guru and Arduino uh, god. And I really rate him. And his videos are superb. He goes into loads of details. That's him. Um, he looks better with a beard, I think, actually. Anyway, that's uh, off topic. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to my, my project. Uh, this is an Arduino powered uh, audio control panel which is going to be a part of my home automation system which also will be controlling lights and doing sensors around the house and PIRs and door sensors and washing machine sensors and temperature and humidity sensors which uh, I should say will all be connected to Arduinos um, and sending messages via MQTT back to the Open Hub server on the network. Um, all of these sensors will be mounted in face plates, ceiling and wall plates with concealed wiring um, using these kind of nice brushed stainless steel plates and back boxes where necessary. Anyway, this is my first prototype of the wall controller face plate using stripboard. The stripboard did take a ridiculously long time to solder up. My skills are a bit rusty anyway, so I'm going to be making my own PCBs. Just got myself an Accurize PCB drilling rig. Um, I'm going to show you why it took such a long time because I'm going to just undo this for you so you can see what's going on under here. I'm going to take off this display. So we've got an Arduino Nano and this 74HC4050 converter. This is a level, a hex level converter, which what it does is it takes your signals, your 5 volt signals from the Arduino, trans translates them uh, down to 3.3 volts. Obviously the Arduino Nano does provide 3.3 volts. Uh, but only as a you know, power output, not as a, an output from the digital pins. So that's why we need this thing here, um, because this is a 3.3 volt uh, display. This is actually a great display. This is a OLED 256 by 64 uh, display from New Haven Electronics. Uh, these are about 23 quid from Mouser, far more expensive than the 2 to £3 20 by 4 blue backlit displays. Um, but this is a graphics display with really good support for, well, anything really. So I mean, I'm, I'm using the UHG library, which supports fonts and custom graphics and scrolling, you name it, it's great. Um, anyway, that's all we've got, and a couple of pull-down pull resistors, and these little kind of lit up tactile switches. I'm still on the market for some better tactile switches than these. They're very cheap on eBay. And they're probably quite good, but they're just not quite the right size for the project, uh, physically anyway. I'll put this back together. I'll show you this booting up, but put these back in. I've temporarily put these in um, dip package things so I can take them out so I don't have to solder them directly in because I might want to reuse them. Um, so this is what it looks like when it boots up. Let's give you a better view. Power in. I'm going to try that a second time because I didn't put the knob on and also it didn't actually boot up because I have my fingers over some ports which shorted them out so that was a fail. Anyway so we power in like that and watch it boot. It will give us the IP address first, um, the one that is programmed is statically signed unfortunately, then it gets the track and then it gets the volume all kind of timed like that um, and as you can see pressing is play and pause. I probably have a little play pause icon on there as well so you know whether it is play or paused um, in case the volume's turned down or something like that. Um, so that single press does that. Obviously the volume controls it. Now that volume that's displayed on the screen is not a variable stored in the Arduino. It's actually stored on the OpenHab server which is controlling Squeezebox directly. There's a binding on open hub for squeeze box um, so uh, yeah basically what that does that readout there shows what open hub has set it to so that's actually a live update so if you update the volume from your iPhone or from any other user interface that should reflect what it does reflect immediately it's nice and quick too as you can see it's pretty much instantaneous which is useful to know that what you're seeing on the display is actually what's happening in the real world. Um, I'm going to show you now the MQTT messages that are coming into the server. So this is a Mosquito Sub, that's MQTT 
client. Um, I'm going to subscribe to uh, this channel, or, or actually all channels under this one here, under this path, um, on the server Bartok, that's my server name. And what this does is it will tune into anything. So I've got a number of channels under this. I've got audio home bedroom title, audio home bedroom volume. I've got audio home bedroom Arduino vector, which is the messages that are sent from the Arduino to OpenHab, and then the title and the volume come back from that. Um, so I'll, I'll tune into everything and you can see what, what the messages look like. So I'll hit enter and it's just waiting for things now. So as and when I turn this, we're going to see the vectors going up, 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 and the volume that gets reported back on the volume channel, um, and then down, 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 and then it stops at zero, hopefully. be a bit embarrassing if it didn't. Um, and then up, 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 up. It's pretty responsive, so you can get all the way up to 99 pretty quickly. Maybe that should be 100. Hmm. Um, then I'm going to do the play pause, single press play, play pause, and then on play, it reports back the name of the track as well, just to update the display. And on pause, it doesn't. So there's a single command which is being sent called play pause, which toggles the state, because obviously we don't want to press play if someone else has already pressed pause in another room. Um, no, that didn't make sense. We don't want to press play if someone else has already pressed play in another room and vice versa with pause. Um, anyway, we've also got uh, something rather cool here, which is the double press, which moves to the next track. And that's the name of the track, and you can see that on there. And then, again, triple press, as you might expect, goes back to the previous track. And then we've got these favourites buttons, and the favourites are actually programmed to send a little uh, message on the Arduino Vector MQTT channel called Fave 1, Fave 2, and Fave 3. They are not Jazz, Radio 4, and Sleepbot, um, because if you want to have different favorites in different rooms, you can do that. So I'm going to hit Jazz. Actually, this is a, a, a random playlist of all of my music under the genre Jazz. Hit that, it'll come up with another thing. And what it also does is it resets the volume as well, which is quite handy. So that if I want to just listen to Radio 4 and it's already turned up ridiculously loudly, I don't want to get a fright. So I'll hit Radio 4 and look, watch the volume. Oops, hold that down. The volume goes back down to 7, which for my bedroom is a lovely volume. And then Sleepbot is what I listen to when I go to sleep. There's a very dodgy, I'm just going to ignore that because I haven't fixed that yet. That's a very long track title, it just wraps back on itself anyway. That's the actual track title, Ambient Music. Anyway, this has been coded to be pretty generic, so you could use the controllers for anything. So these are set, obviously, to change the music and the playlist, but you could use them for controlling the lights or setting a mood or doing a combination of things. Just all they're doing is they're sending messages on MQTT to an open hub server, which will control your aircon, your fish tank, you name it. Um, so my plans for the lighting control are to have four of these great uh, rotary encoders with nice knobs on um, to control uh, four channels of light in one double back box. However, because they're pressy controllers, what you could do is cycle through each room. So if you are in the kitchen, you want to control the kitchen, it will default to that. Then if you want to control the upstairs living room or the downstairs living room or whatever, you just double press and then the whole bank of four will now be controlling the living room lights and then it will cycle onto the bedroom or whatever you want. Um, and of course you can display on the display screen what it is that you're controlling. Um, likewise with these things here, double pressing can change their function. Um, in fact, the sky's the limit and it's very, very easy to implement um, if you want to control, if, if you want a button that sets the radio, opens the blinds and turns the lights on and starts the kettle. Of course you can have that as one button and uh, it will send one good morning message on a channel to the open hub server and it will go off and do all its stuff. So that is the grand master plan of my open hub Arduino controlled life. <laughs>